Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, come with me and let's meet a genuine, one-of-a-kind artist, author, and speaker. Yes, you see it right. He's live right here at the circus. You know, over the years of taping this podcast, Beyond Clean with Ace, I've had the pleasure of talking with hundreds of individuals from all over the world, but none have been more inspiring, enlightening, and entertaining than David Letterfly. He was right here in Winter Garden, Florida this past week, live at the Bernardo's Circus. He's the graphics artist painter. Yes, that's right. He paints everything freehand. I was told to find him at the little yellow VW bus, so let's go there. Now, why am I kind of honing in on this? Well, because right over here, there's another gentleman I want to introduce you to. He paints all of this lettering freehand with a brush. You've got to meet him. And there he is. David Letterfly. Why are we at the circus and talking with you today? Welcome, everybody, to the circus. My career actually started here at the circus when I was 16 years old. So even though the circus isn't a big part of my life today, because I'm an artist primarily, I especially enjoy, I have a very, very special place in my heart for the circus, and I have paid homage to my career starting at the circus with some of the things that I get to build and decorate for the circus. I built this t ticket box. It actually folds down flat for transport. And the owner of Venardo Circus especially enjoys my artistic touch and the fact that I am uniquely qualified to not only decorate but build some of the equipment and the signage that they use to make their circus more fun. Folks, I'll guarantee you what, I've done a lot of podcasts over the last seven years, but this is one that you have to stay, watch everything here because you've never seen a podcast like this before. This was the van that I saw, and I guess, you know what? I'll probably find him in here somewhere, but look at all of that. Now, believe it or not, that is all done by hand with a brush, freehand. So he said to come and find him at the yellow VW van. And guess what? I found him. Here is the man at work. So David, tell us what you're doing here. Hey Dave, I am doing everything the old fashioned way. I do things by hand. I'm making a paper pattern so that I can make sure that the, that the logo for all of the truck doors is identical. I make a paper pattern and now I'm perforating it by hand. And I do it right here in my little workshop, my portable workshop. I've got all, I've got everything you can imagine for the sake of making signs right here at my fingertips. All my little brushes, different colors of paint, everything that you can imagine is right here at my fingertips. Yep. So this is the man hard at work. I say hard at work, but David, I don't think this is hard work for you. Well, the, tr the trick to this kind of work is to just remain relaxed at all times. People will ask me, they say, my God, you must be, you must be uh, fatigued. You must be exhausted after a long day of doing this. But the truth of the matter is the, the touch of the, the brush, the way that I, it's sort of my yoga and my meditation and it's relaxing, all built into one fascinating vocation, I guess you'd say. Okay, so that's a small one, but you do this on some rather large vehicles as well. Oh, yes, I certainly do. And I do it the old fashioned way that I was trained to do. This particular trailer right here 
needs to get uh, the words circus. And if you look at my sketch, the way that I do this, I do this the old trade way. I drew a scale model or scale drawing of the uh, of the unit, and then I figured out where my letters go. And then using this yardstick, I use simple arithmetic, and I come over here and I draw each letter on the side of the trailer. Okay, folks, you see that white chalk line? There, there it is. There's the letter. There's the first one. I can't show you all of it. It's just too big. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of painting on there. Oh yeah, it sure will. But it'll be, you'll be able to see it from the next state. Now, what you might have noticed is there was this big V on the entrance signboard, folks. But David does this not just on billboards and painted like that, but you do this on automobiles. All kinds of stuff. Automobiles, motorcycles, guitars. There are people that bring me their prosthetic legs and even their cake mixers. So I virtually decorate whatever it is that you want decorated. Pinstriping is the traditional way to establish and imply quality. It's been part of the automotive and it goes back way back even to back in the carriage and wagon building days pinstriping implies quality and it also one of the things that the circus wants to do is to impress people that no expense has been spared for the sake of your entertainment pleasure okay folks here's the RV park well you know it's not an RV park Although it looks like someplace where I live, but this is back lot of the circus. Now, you know, here's these RVs. Now, that right there, that's computer generated artwork. It's, you know, hey, it's just a decal stuck on the side of a, an RV. Well, I got something to show you because Dave here, you've got something else to show me, Dave. What in the heck is this? It's a hand painted flying horse that graces the side of my RV puller and it's all hand painted okay I'm gonna get up close but I want you to tell people how long does something like this take oh this a project like this takes oh pretty close to a week because it's a, a whole bunch of uh, masking and spraying and, and different layers of colors and, and then when it's all done it gets clear coated and then it gets knocked down and then it gets clear coated again to, to make that uh, universal sheen high quality uh, coat of paint. So whatever got you started in doing all of this Dave? I started as a child painting I noticed when I was a little boy, I, when I was big enough to see out of the car, I saw the little pinstripe designs on the other cars and I had the thought, I could do that. And when I got home, I started to decorate my wagon and my bicycle with little decorations. And then the neighbor kids noticed what I was doing and they would come and talk me into doing something for them. And I go, yeah, I could do that. And the whole time I'd be decorating their bicycle, I'd be thinking, why don't they just do it themselves? Well, because they couldn't. But folks, you know, you hear that generator back. We're in the back lot. We're going to go inside the circus tent so that you can hear a little bit more about the story about how Dave came to do this and be called Letterfly. Now, folks, we're going to take a walk around the tent. Hey, as I said, it's a live circus, so if you see somebody in the background, they got to get ready for the show today. But Dave, these signs, hey, this is what I'm looking at, because i got to believe this is some of your handiwork. It sure is. One of the things that I especially enjoy about the owner of this circus is he wants hand-painted signs for virtually everything, even though he is fully aware that he can get computer-generated uh, equivalents to satisfy these requirements. He simply wants the touch and the feel and the personality of something that was painted by hand. I actually made the 
illuminated sign uh, boxes for him. Yeah, he said he'll paint it on anything. So see folks, there's the hardwood, but here's the lemonade stand. And then down here, here's the stand that holds it all. Gosh, your handiwork is everywhere, Dave. It's pretty much everywhere. And 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 you gotta you gotta eat while you're here at the circus. So here's this. Oh, there's a cashier. Now, whenever you paint a face like that, do you do you have a stencil or something, or is that just it's out of your head? It's a, sort of out of my head. It's uh, I make I certainly make a pattern. I draw. I start with drawing a sketch, so I have a clear idea about what I'm going to do before I start cutting the shape out of the piece of board and and then uh, painting it up. So yeah, it starts with a sketch. <laughs> so you went to art school too. That's a funny story, Dave. I'm glad you asked because in when I was in high school I, and I was gung ho about joining the circus. I was actually awarded a tuition scholarship to go to college because of my art skills. And I told them, give it to somebody else because I'm going to go join the circus. <laughs> and I did. And they probably thought you were going to fail. Apparently uh, they were wrong because uh, <laughs> I ended up hitting the ground running and I've been running ever since. The uh, my pattern in regards to my artistic background and education has been a e never-ending series of mentors. Whenever I became fascinated about some aspect of this artistic trade that I'm involved in, I would seek out and find somebody who was excellent at what it was that I wanted to learn, and then I started to learn from them. Okay, folks, now you might see some light because the circus tent's going up over here a little bit. I'm just going to, Dave, go ahead and talk, but I want to show them. We really are here. They are getting set up for the circus, folks. You see this? The workers are putting things up. The tent's coming up around the sides. Dave, you see this all the time. Uh-huh, definitely. Showbiz, it's around the clock. There's something going on at the circus all the time. So, hey, you even got a little bit of a sneak peek of what goes on before you come to the show. Dave, I, I got to tell you, I see something way over on the other side of the tent we need to go see. Let's go look at it. Come on. So, folks, we are at the circus. They are preparing for the show tonight. So, we're going to get run out of here pretty quick. But I wanted to show you what I saw on the other side of the tent. Now, there's that face painting sign that Dave made. But... Dave, you're over here now. And what do we have here? One of the things that is magical about the circus is the toys that are available, the souvenirs. And Kevin commissioned me to decorate and engineer some of the sign work and the integral parts of what we call the toy box. Yeah, definitely. He enjoys the fact that I had the ability to make a little statue sitting on the on the uh, circus podiums and little details here and there for the sake of the souvenirs that are for sale. And then the illuminated sign can, which has lights inside that change colors with the little special effect. Those are actually marbles that are going around the letters. And it's all designed to fold up for transport. Okay, so we've learned a lot about David Letterfly and, and everything that you do, but you know, what do you do from here? I mean, gosh, you're just about doing it all. Well, this is a sort of a busman's holiday for me. I love the circus so much that when Kevin asks me to come over and design some more sign work for his circus, it just gives, it just a, ends up being a labor of love. So I come over here and I get to live this, my circus dream as being the circus sign painter. 
And then from here, I'll go to my home where my workshop is and start construction of the new projects that he has just awarded me. So where's home? My home is in Plant City and I'm here during, typically during the winter because just like the circus, I'm off on the road during the middle of my, uh, for the summer season, uh, up north at a different Harley store every week. So just like the circus, I come to my home for the winter. I have a lovely home out in the country. I have a nice workshop in the back that's got not only my spray booth, but the wood shop. So I'm able to handle the construction aspects of of one of a kind uh, special sign work needs and other kinds of special projects right there at my home. I'm going to kind of assume there's another book in the works too. Oh, there's another book, there's another two books, there's another actually three books in the works right now. The next book is actually, it occurred to me that since I have lived my life my entire career enjoying figuring out how to make my living out on the road, combining earning with living in an adventure, that I qualify as the expert at living an interesting life. So I've written a guidebook, it's called Hit the Road and Thrive, The Seven Secrets to Living the Life of Your Dreams. And it is just about complete and if anybody would like to read an advanced copy before launch, all you got to do is make sure that I get your email address and I'll send you an advanced copy so that you can get a leg up on living an interesting life. And where can they get all of this information and contact you, Dave? The best way to contact me is through my website, letterfly.com. And what you'll find on my website when you land there is a way to subscribe to my newsletter and send me an email. And if you would like to have my email address, it's pretty simple. Letterfly at AOL.com. And you can also see this podcast there, folks. And if you want to, we'll have it at um, academyofcleaning.com. Uh, you know what, Dave? It's been a pleasure coming to the circus. I'm going to do one last pan. Any final words as we close out today? Well, one of the things that I end up being uniquely qualified to do is to teach others some of the skills that I've acquired as an old school craftsman and sign painter and tutorial artist. And I teach a class once a year at my home in Plant City. It's called the Custom Paint Workshops, where I teach sign lettering, pinstriping, airbrushing, pictorial painting, and gold leaf gilding during the five-day workshop. It's every year during the first week of February. And if you want more information, visit letterfly.com. Thanks, Dave, for your time. Sure. Appreciate it. Now, folks, before I leave the circus for the morning, I had to come back out and find the van. Dave took off. Don't know where he went, but you know what? I found the van open, and I and I found some paint brushes and stuff here. And then you know what? I turn around, and guess what? There is the artist at work, folks. Hand lettering. Now he drew, I showed you earlier the little white lines. Well, here he is following those little white lines. I didn't want to break your concentration there, Dave. No, Yo, you're all right. I'm used to it. This is going to end up being the biggest circus name probably ever painted. It's going to be almost as, the same length as this 50 foot trail. So here we are. Yeah, there's those chalk lines.
You know, I was talking to somebody, Dave, about what you do this morning, and they said, you know what? I don't think I have steady enough hands for this. <sighs> That's what I hear every day. I somebody will say, does that take a steady hand? <laughs> <laughs> it takes as much concentration as anything else, Dave, right? Oh, I've been at it so long and in such a variety of environments that I can be in the middle of probably a little bit of chaos and I still have the ability to focus my attention on the project at hand and keep going. Folks, I'm just going to back out here a little bit and show you. Now that's the size of the letter that you see being made. But I'm going to try to get back out here where you can see the full length of what Dave is doing. You know what? We all have a job to do. He loves his career, but look at the length of that thing that he's got to paint. You know what? I think that uh, even though we can't show you all of it in this podcast because he's just getting started, I'll bet you, Dave, at some point you'll be able to show me the finished product and we can post that on our page too. That's exactly right. Yep.